good morning everyone it is 1 a.m. in the morning here in Las Vegas Wednesday morning November the 7th uh, I want to go through some of the comments from yesterday's video but first I want to say this uh, those of us what I call the good guys we put, we like to play by the rules This is, there are no rules in love and war. There are no rules. Uh, rules are man-made. Um, laws are man-made. Uh, facts change. It's a fact you're listening to this video right now. But in a few hours, that won't be true. That fact will change. Facts change. Uh, but there are principles. That's why we war not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of the principalities. Uh, and there are no rules in this game. Um, example, let's talk about chess for a minute. If you want to win this game, how it's done. Because one, we are all pawns in the game. We don't have any titles. We have no power. We are simply put out there as pawns for one side or the other. Well, there's that one pawn that if he does not engage the enemy and he can make it to the other side, he can gain a title. He can become any other player on the board except the king. He can't become the king. The king is the king. He can become a queen, though, if the queen is, has been lost. He can replace any other on the board, and that is done by not engaging in combat. Do not provoke the enemy is the lesson in that, because there are no rules in this game. I don't care what anybody says. If you want to contract yourself into believing there are rules, then there are, but they happen to know they're not. There is one rule, and it's called the Law of Equivalent Exchange. And when we contract in, we give, so we are losing, right? We, they make us believe we're getting. Oh, I'm going to give you this, but if you sign this, right? Uh, so that's not the way this is done. Let's go through some of these comments. In this construct, being built on other people's losses. Yes, that's what I was just saying. I want to go to the one before. No, no, no. So, if this is fake, what would the real look like? It looks like this uncorrupted. This is a replica, a facsimile, a carbon copy. It's made to look like the real. Uh, when I drowned in the swimming pool, I realized that I had two bodies. Uh, the body, I watched one body, I watched one of my bodies drowning. My flesh body was drowning. But I had another body. And it was just as real as that one. It was more real than that one. I call it my light body. I was underwater and I was aware this body could breathe underwater. That fascinated me. I was young. I was just I experienced the moment and I moved my hands through the water and I could feel the density of the water but I couldn't feel the wet but at the same time I knew I was trapped in the water now, that's why I understand how we're trapped in the body is by water and you the more water you removed from your body when you go into dehydration, the closer you get to spirit and or what we call this thing, death. Uh, one, there is no death. Uh, energy only changes from one form to another. This construct seems to be about harnessing energy. It's all about energy. That's why it's all about the energy companies. And you trade your energy, your time, allotted to you here, your energy actually, because we expire when we run out of energy. So we have this law of equivalent exchange, and we trade our time slash energy 
for, for something else. Uh, generally, that something else is to satisfy the flesh body. And it has nothing to do with magnifying the inner self, your light body. Uh, to me, the flesh body, it's like a chicken egg. And, uh, but it looks like a chicken, right? It's a chicken egg that looks like a chicken. And when we peck our way out of it, uh, we come into this brand new world. Well, this whole universe to me is like being inside the chicken egg. The universe itself is, we are inside the cosmic mind. We're, as, as all of us are in our own mind, uh, when we look up, we see our stars ourselves. We are in the cosmic mind. That's why I believe the earth is the third eye. Uh, the sun is the right eye. The moon is the left eye. Uh, that's the way in and out. But it is the third eye that connects us beyond this cosmic mind and this sleep. It's like if, if the cosmic mind is God, he's dreaming and we're all asleep. Uh, but there are those of us who are awake in the dream. I have the ability to manipulate my dreams. When they're not going a way I want them to, I immediately rebel. No, no, no. And I switch it. And I use my imagination within the dream. Wakingly, knowingly, but in the dream. Manipulate the dream to go the way I want it. Uh, a lot of times, instead of changing the dream uh, and it's not going the way I want it I dislike it or I have the root of dislike is fear uh, so I have a fear against it so I confront it I can manipulate it in many different ways uh, I don't know if everybody does that I know some that do uh, but we are in this law of equivalent exchange and we only have one thing exchange and that's our time slash energy uh, next question what do you mean by RH blood mothers is the child born corrupted blood um, what they're doing now with the Rogam shot yes they are corrupting the bloodlines with the Rogam shot uh, my color is off all of my sisters had the Rogam shot I didn't have it I had countless miscarriages uh, even the son I have I spent seven months in the hospital to have him and they never checked to see if I was positive or negative instead of giving me the Rogam shot uh, they sewed up my cervix so that I could not miscarry and uh, I realize now they were a guinea pig in my ass but we were never told we were never told till after the fact. And um, I kept breeding with positive males. Uh, I tend to be a scapegoat empath. I attract narcissists. And ironically, they tend to be on the positive side. Not that positive is bad or corrupted. It's simply just a different creation. To me, uh, that is put there as a kill switch. The positive, to me, everybody was originally negative bloodline. It's the positive that's corrupted because it's more controllable. Uh, because it's ruled by Mars, it's part of the Mars bloodline, it runs in the lower chakras. It uh, is easily evoked emotionally, uh, easily controlled as a slave. When we talk about about yesterday in the, in the Nag Hammadi text, uh, it tells us that Adam, this second Adam, was created as a slave. And so, and that he was put to sleep or made to forget. Okay? Um, now, this bloodline, these bloodlines, to me, they're not really good or bad. What they have to do with is the frequency that the body runs on. You're either running on a copper-based frequency or an iron-based frequency. The copper base can carry higher tones where the iron frequency reacts to lower tones. 
that doesn't make one good and the other bad. It's just what you're able to tune into. These bodies are receivers. They're also transmitters. Um, so we receive and then we channel through us. We transmit through us. So the copper bloodlines tend to be more in tune with higher frequencies. And uh, that's simply what that means. To where the lower ones, they're more in tune to uh, base frequencies. Okay? Somebody in a copper bloodline that has a strong copper bloodline, they're going to respond to more of a calming opera, high frequency, high tones music, uh, to where more of a symphony, to where uh, the positive bloodlines are going to respond in those bass, boom, boom, boom. It's all about the bass because that's where it wants to keep your frequency, right? You're vibrating in the lower chakras. Uh, another thing, and it's just simply for control. Uh, another thing about them is our, I believe, our souls. Our souls vibrate on frequencies. And if you want your soul to graduate into a higher frequency, a higher vibration, which puts us in another realm around us, this other, uh, con this construct we're in, it's it we're really just veiled the other world is right around us the kingdom is now it's all around us it but it's in another frequency and but we're in the flesh bodies we can't take it the flesh bodies themselves can't exist in that frequency but we have a transmitter that goes between the two and that is our pineal gland um it is easier for the copper bloodlines to access the pineal gland through high frequencies where, uh, and then you walk into the upper uh, realm around us to where when you come through the lower chakras, uh, through stuff like tantric sex uh, or sex period, then you go into another realm, but you do it in the lower chakras. And it's uh, another one, what I call a shade realm. It's not, it's not the real light. Just like the sun outside is not the real light. Uh, our real sun is there. But we, we, ha we have a government. Our mind is governed. It's covered. And we're not able to see. So you have to look through the mind's eye, which is the third eye. We have an ability to take over this construct. I believe a lot of souls that are manifesting here now are doing for that reason. But regardless, regardless, when we move into Aquarius, uh, it's the highest. It's the master frequency on the realm. It's the fixed cross. It's the fixed heavens. And so we're going to get a higher frequency. Uh, the veil is going to come off literally, physically, mentally, spiritually, psychologically, uh, it's coming down. And we are going to see ourselves for who we are. That's why we need to get in touch with ourselves. Uh, your light, to you need to manifest your light body now while you're in this body. Because when you leave, it's like being born into another body. You're stuck with that body. Well, you get to term, determine that body now. And it can be in a base frequency or a higher frequency, regardless of what bloodline you're in. Regardless, there are good people and bad people born in both bloodlines. Uh, not that one is better than the other, but the negative, I mean, the positive bloodline is easier, easier controlled. Uh, and they produce uh, psychopaths easier because they're easier to manipulate. They when you when they run in the lower chakras, they run in fear. You have fight or flight, right? And that's the lower chakra. What would the upper chakra do? It would not flee, and it does not fight. It simply disempowers its enemy by disengaging. It's not run. You stand. You stand regardless. 
because when you leave this body there the only thing that dies is the body the DNA and to me that's the fake construct is the fake DNA that we have it's based on a copy of a light code it's based on the copy of a light code but it's produced in a lower frequency and the lower the frequency the vibrations come together and produce what we call matter to me this frequency in our system comes from the planet Jupiter the higher frequencies come from Saturn Mars I'm at Saturn Venus and Mercury the lower frequencies are run through the moon Jupiter uh, the Sun also and uh, Mars they run the lower chakras and the lower frequencies so when you tune into these different planets are frequencies now the the lower base frequency of Jupiter rules the age of Pisces along with the moon okay and even uh, Mercury Mercury Jupiter and the moon so we can't even trust Mercury right now because of that and so therefore Venus Lucifer's being demonized and Saturn's being demonized because of this and they invoke Jupiter and Mercury with their hand sign and they'll throw Mars in there because he's that base you gotta have that base that's why hip-hop music and rap music and it's the rhythm <clears throat> it's all about patterns and uh, we are everything in existence whether spiritual or physical responds to frequencies and patterns uh, I can't stand it uh, my pet peeve are patterns because it's just the same thing over and over and over and over and it's a repeat and it's the same story and in every language and uh, it's this going to school they made us repeat 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 I hated that you can tell me something one time and that's all you need to tell me when you start repeating things to me it gives me a headache and but it's programming the people that's why when you start seeing things repeated at you then you know you're being programmed when you see the same thing over and over and over again these same commercials on the set television the same shit on the news you know you're being programmed there is no new thing under the Sun it's all freaking peat and repeat which again goes back to Jupiter Jupiter is about empire expansion and everything builds on itself to expand so it's peat and repeat it's copy after copy after copy and eventually that those copies start breaking down and especially in bloodlines when you start making copy after copy if you don't introduce new bloodlines then uh, your copy breaks down and there are those out there ready to take advantage of that copy breaking down because this is all the law of equivalent exchange that's the only law and principle and that will never change is that to get something you must give something and they have you give your energy your time and they give you this thing called money and it's a deception but we seem to be strapped under it in this construct uh, what we are not told is that we can take our time and our energy and manifest our own uh, empaths copper bloodlines and certain zodiac signs tend to have um, a problem with working for other people uh, Capricorns have a problem working under people uh, people on the fixed and especially the Cardinal Cross uh, they have the authority they have the innate abilities to be the masters and the grandmasters but we live on the we're in the age of the mutable cross and we have mutables ruling this and uh, actually we need them as a species this had to happen this is part of the bigger picture 
All they're seeing, all that we see is the story that we're in right now. They call it history, and it's all bogus, but that's what we have to work with. But when you step back and you look at the bigger picture in the Zodiac, there are wheels within wheels. They've got you on one wheel. You're riding a unicycle. You're in the universe, right? And they've switched that verse from let there be to no, you ain't. No, you can't do that. Uh, we can do anything we want to here. The only thing that stop us are other people. And we have to learn to stop them dead in their tracks. Let's do it anyway. Uh, do no harm. Uh, karma, the law of equivalent exchange, it's going to come back to you. And it will come back to them. Uh, if not in this world, it will, in the next, through your children. That you're, you're part of that frequency now. You've created something that's a part of a frequency of you. And it's a copy. And the copies are less. Every generation, my grandmother told, my mother told me, uh, we think we're getting smarter, we're getting dumber. They're dumbing us down in our schools. Uh, they dumbed my mother down from my grandmother. They dumbed us down. Uh, we think we're smarter and we're not. We're just more programmed. They tell us we're smart because... They feed us this lie, and we regurgitate the lie, and they give us a star, they give us an A, a smiley face, and therefore you're smarter. Really. Uh, the, I tell you again, the only player on the chessboard that even has a freaking chance of raising its elevation is the pawn. The rest of them are all contracted in. When you have a title, you're contracted in. We can be the winners of this game. We can be the pawns that, one, we don't engage. And we just sit there and wait our turn. And when the door opens, you walk through it. Don't force a door open. Then you've entered into combat. You just wait. The door will open. And you can make it to the other side. Did you hear what I just said? You can make it to the other side. We have to worry about ourselves. There's nothing we can do about the others. We've all got strings on us, and we're puppets, and they pull our strings. Uh, the strings are attached to our emotions, and they evoke us. But if none of this is real, why do we respond? Why do we react? Why do we get angry and fall into the law into the lower chakras and into those base emotions. We need to raise our frequencies. Walk through our own doors. You create kindness. You create opportunity. You're the creative ones. Look, this construct thing is mechanical. It can't create. It's set on a parameters of repeat and repeat. Copy after copy after copy. There's nothing new. We've learned his story. It's a pack of freaking lies and programming. We have the ability to hijack this whole freaking thing. All of it. But we war against our own selves and those within our own families. So how do we do that? We start with ourselves. And then you don't go evangelize and push it on others. This thing is built to happen naturally. There's a natural... There, this fake construct is there to manipulate the natural construct or the natural alchemy. It's what I've been telling you about the Zodiac. There are two matrices. There's a natural one. It's called 1.618 ratio, the golden ratio. It repeats itself in a natural fractal manner. And then there's pi, this, this other construct. And it's in a lower frequency. And it, it builds upon itself also. And they're both infinite. They're both infinite. And they both repeat within themselves. And ironically, I guarantee you that you'll find pi within phi and phi in the sequence of pi. Eventually, like the double helix, they're going to lap over each other. 
they're going to lap over each other. And then they're going, I believe that's where we're at now. Because they tell us uh, part of humanities, which they've already, it's already happening. It's been happening. Uh, they're moving us into cybernetics, right? Cyber humanism. Uh, I know that for a fact. My dad was in the military. And when he got out, everybody thought he was completely fucking loon. Uh, this was the most brilliant man I've ever met. My intelligence dwarfs in comparisons to his. He had very few words. Uh, we communicated telepathically. I was so connected to him. Uh, super brilliant man. Ended up working for... He worked for John Deere, and then he went to work for the oil companies designing offshore oil rigs in the North Sea. And uh, they chipped him when he was in the military and that was when I was born uh, my father wasn't around when I was born uh, he was in the military uh, and he told us for years he was chipped and we didn't understand what that mean there were no computers what do you mean chipped uh, so yeah this goes back further than we think and he had words that he would use he called it swindle that's what he called. He said it's an electrical thing. And what they do, he would tell me they're out in the parking. We were in the hospital one day. And he was having a complete breakdown. And he said, they're swindling me. They're out in the parking lot right now. And they're doing this to me. I, and it's he, he, he said they could even put voices in his head. And he knew it was the military doing it. He was quite aware. But when you start talking about this in the 60s and 70s, in 80s people thought you were freaking crazy and so that's how they labeled him I knew he wasn't he was too coherent this was not somebody that was insane people react he was in complete control of his faculties and uh, I already people already thought I was crazy anyway I had to grow up not telling people hey I remember before I born and all you people are asleep nobody's awake uh, when you're really really awake you connect with nature the animals start talking to you the nature in this world not the manipulated construct that we live in because everything's generated by the mind so it is their objective to control the collective right and they do they control both sides of the collective one or the other and there's good and bad in both but don't play the game uh, yeah I'm hoping my volume is better in this video uh, crystals from silica but yeah but it's natural silica what they're dispensing on us is silicon it's got a con in it uh, yeah I believe y'all to both is a, is a type of computer experience it's based it is based on it's a divine simulation yeah we can step out from the simulation uh, the the construct itself cannot leave itself but we can leave it yeah wake the fuck up back to the ancient altar things are yeah yes uh, all around the world uh, you're going to find the images uh, and when you find one image there are three other representing as well uh, when you talk about Antares you're on the fixed cross okay you're on the fixed cross uh, so you're going to have the symbols of the fixed cross there which does have an air symbol as well that's why the dragon had feathers well, you have three symbols of a dragon one has feathers one has feet right or one has wings one has feet and then he's cast down and simply becomes a serpent right the dragon is changed into a serpent and that's just telling you how the symbols change through the three different stages of the three different crosses there's a snake on all three crosses, okay? Everybody gets a snake. 
It's just where do you have your snake? Is it in your left hand, your right hand, at your feet, or at your head? That's the question to ask. Uh, but you're on the right track here when you talk about the symbolism and location. You need the right image in the right location. And when you start putting that all over the earth, then you can see how this snake slithers from its power moves from one continent and one peoples to another. And it does it red, yellow, black, and white. Or actually, it does it uh, red, black, yellow, white. Yeah, white and red touch. It's uh, You have two snakes. You have a king snake and a cobra snake. And they carry the same colors. They look alike, but the colors touch each other differently. And uh, that's how you... It's even built into nature. It's ironic how this thing is laid out. But we are definitely told in the Nag Hammadi and other sources that... Um, this is the fake construct. It's not natural. It's unnatural. You have you have unnatural, natural, and then you have supernatural. Uh, yeah, they copied the light codes, Tan. They sure did. Uh, I want to talk about this for a minute while we're on light workers. I got something to say about light workers. Years ago, before YouTube was all off and all that, I belonged to a website. A near death experience that's all we were there we were a group of NDEs and it was going really well we were all actually getting somewhere we information was starting to reveal itself in this group and we were invaded by light workers they came in and told you oh you're a walk-in or you're an NDE you're a freaking light worker and they started hijacking the website and I seen what was happening and they got the moderators first on board the same thing happened on the cult.biz by the way all of us on these forums were starting to figure it out and so in come the new age movement and in come the light workers distorting what we were doing and they literally took over that site and run me off because I told them they were telling all the people uh, let's put all of our light together and we'll put it up in the sky and cover the earth with it and I'm like holy moly they're talking you smooth into giving it away they're playing on your love they're playing on your empathy and none of them saw it and these were what I call top rank awake people when you talk about NDEs and especially the walk-ins and they fell right into this. Uh, books like the raw material and all of this that came out of Chicago. I can't tell you the wickedness that comes out of that place. Anything coming out of Illinois. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, it's a special place spiritually. So it is attacked uh, spiritually. Anywhere you see gross amounts of negative people the Vatican that's a highly spiritual place that's why it's they built these stone limestone marble buildings on top of it it's it's the opening the earth is opening its pineal gland and they put these huge constructs on top of it like the Great Pyramid they're telling you where how you get in They're telling you how to get in, and you don't need to get in, because when you get in, you can start changing the light codes. To change this construct, you must change the light code. That's what I know. And the light code is based in emotion, frequency. And the physical opposites attract, but in the spiritual, like attracts like minds attract that's why you're on my channel none of us look alike we live there we couldn't be more different we live in different places around the world we're different ages we're different colors we come from different backgrounds and different countries but we seem to have a base root connection that lies in we're we're waking up we know we're um 
different. We're in, there are a lot of empaths on my channels. There are a lot of you that know uh, you're still, we're searching, we're searching and we've all bumped into each other and realized, oh, we're searching for some of the same things. Well, let's hang for a while together. This is good. This is good. But then we'll get those that come in that want to call themselves light workers. Yeah. Which light are you working for? Because there's a false light. The only real light is within you. The, within the, the light's hidden inside the body. It's hidden inside the mind. It's between the two eyes. Uh, the sun, the moon, and the earth, the three eyes. That's why the great, I believe the great pyramid, it not only points to the earth, it points to the third eye. And I believe the earth itself is the third eye of the universe that all creation is going to come from this source. We're in the source. And all we need to do is remove the limestone, remove the scale, the calcification from the pineal gland. And they're busy not removing it, they're building it. That's why they call the builders. The builders work for the construct. They work for the construct. They're in the black and the white. I don't like the new YouTube studio. It doesn't work for me. I don't get to see my I don't need all this other information with this. Yes, Masri. That's correct. Uh, Egypt, I told you it's a constructed word. It's part of the spell. If you want to know a true name for Egypt, uh, you're going to go back to the word Babylon because the symbol of Babylon is the lion. And that's confusion to where the symbol of the man is um, knowing. Aquarius is knowing. All right, uh, let's get into some other stuff here. I might have to uh, reconstruct my screen. I want to turn on Stellarium. Let me pause this. All right, I wanted to go live stream, and when I turned it on, it said, can't find your webcam. And I'm like, no kidding. Uh, I have a monitor, not a laptop, so there is no webcam in the monitor. So I, that's another attachment I'm going to have to go get. The attachments drive me crazy. Okay, let me come out of this and go into this. Did I get that right? We got some meteor showers coming down right now, so I'm going to leave those up. A lot of shit falling from the sky. The stars are falling. You ain't seen nothing yet. At what's it coming? These are the meteor showers we can see now. Uh, the sun, When the sun rises over here, it is the opposite stars that rise. So the sun is in Libra, so we're seeing Taurus and Aries now. Right, we're seeing this now, opposite. The earth is in this sign. It's in the fire right now. If the sun is in Libra, then the earth is in the purification or destruction of Aries. And that's the pineal gland. That's what they want to do too. They want to destroy the earth as its pineal gland, but it's the source. Mars still in Capricorn getting ready to move into Aquarius when on the 1111 Mars moves into Aquarius now that's unique see what else is going on that day uh, moon conjunct Saturn what's the moon's uh, three day old moon 14% so it's hosting Saturn. Going to get a crescent moon with Saturn there in Jupiter's house of philosophy. Yeah, you got to close the eye to shoot the arrow, right? 
you got to close one eye to shoot the arrow. Forgot about that one. And I grew up with bow and arrow. Uh, Mercury. Uh, ooh, he's in Scorpio. Everybody that comes through Scorpio is affected by Scorpio. And Scorpio, one of my favorite things about Scorpio is it's about secrets. It's about telling secrets. And it's about, well, yeah, it's about telling secrets. And when you have Mercury there, it's sure about telling secrets. And then the things that Mercury uses. So here's the messenger. And when Jupiter moves into uh, Scorpio as well, uh, Jupiter ruling religion, philosophy, ideology, the church, the empire, then he too will be secrets. Will, he will be telling secrets and secrets will be revealed. We've done went through that when Saturn went through Scorpio. A bunch of dirt was coming out about our government, right? What's going on in government? I mean, some dark, dirty secrets. And it all came out the two years that Saturn was here. It was exposed. Poor Venus. Poor Venus. <laughs> She doesn't come out until December. She doesn't come out of her debilitation until December. The sun is hosting that serpent today in the house in the Most High. When you see the Most High in the Bible, it means the Cardinal Cross. Master means the fixed cross. Mutable is the car, uh, the mutable cross, or it's the peoples. We're the peoples. We're on the mutable cross. We're the waters. We're just the people. Uh, more people le still leaving our lives. Uh, you're going to see a bunch of YouTube channels starting to fall. A bunch of them. Uh, Facebook and uh, Google are doing it for you too. They're just going to start removing them. Neptune is in a brilliant place. Neptune, this is the water of life. This is the, the blood and the water that flows from the Messiah. It's the spring of the water of life. This is what this is. And our imagination is there right now amongst all this other chaos. Those of us who can not choose one side or the other, but go into your imagination. Uh, Mars is in Capricorn right now for the next three days in manifestation. And you and both in Saturn's house, and while Saturn is in ideology, so we should be able to use these characteristics and really manifest something for ourselves. The sun and the most high of Libra, that that heart in, in the heavens, the heart again is torn between Earth, Taurus, and heaven, Libra. But the alchemy is good right now for the next three days until the 11th when and then Mars is going to move in with Aquarius so we could even see more uh, manifestation here. The big picture is uh, you have when you talk about manifestation from the etheric into the physical we have one on the cardinal cross, one on the mutable cross, and one on the fixed cross. Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune. It, it appears that it's so far from manifestation. That's on the big picture. But it's the little things. It's the little things, and they add up. This is personal. It's not the big picture of your life. It's not manifesting your daydreams. This is simple manifestations. But it can be done. You can manifest quite a bit right now for yourself. But manifestation itself looks completely broke down with all three of these on different crosses. But they all are in the upper houses. Jupiter's not, actually. Jupiter don't. Upper house is anything after uh, the winter solstice, which falls right here at the arrow. So we have Saturn rising, Moon rising. Uh, it rises. It comes over the eclipse in the spring, and it hits its so its uh, apex in the summer. 
in the summer solstice is now in Taurus that is the fixed cross so that power base is shifting uh, when they show us the great pyramids they tell us that it's the triple star system of Orion they built everything on when the Sphinx clearly shows you who it is <clears throat> and that it's Fomahal which is a triple star system and they don't want to show us that they're banking on Sirius and they are serious that's why they have Soros it's the SRS <clears throat> You know, in the Egyptian, let's go there. I love doing this. I love the Egyptian. Come on, give us the images. So we get what I call the wizard. This is Sa. <clears throat> and the dog is Kinemet. And they pasted all these images. The Greeks did this. The Greeks pasted all of the imagery of Orion onto North Africa. When that is not its place. North Africa belongs to Leo over here, the lion. And they know that. The, builder, the builders did that. So the builders changed the construct. <clears throat> they changed the zodiac. They changed the symbolism, <clears throat> and there, that's why we have a false matrix that is superimposing itself over the truth, <clears throat> which is natural, and it's very unnatural. They changed the wheel. <clears throat> you know how today when you have a flat tire, they give you the plastic tire, the little you know, rubber wheel, it doesn't have air in it? as a spare that's your spare yeah uh, that's what you got you got a fake tire <clears throat> everything is about the wheels all of the movies <clears throat> the Rocky Horror Picture Show I'm sorry but if you can get past the disgusting shit and the uh, ill ill humor then there's a story being told you there <clears throat> it starts off with uh, Brad and Janet going to a wedding right that's the marriage supper of the lamb they're going to the wedding they're in the wedding party but they they're not part of they're not the bride or the groom they're just there to witness the wedding and when they leave they have a flat tire so they're moving into the next age what we don't have a freaking zodiac ours went flat there goes your tropical astrology it's flat that's why in revelations it tells you <clears throat> Your astrologers can't are no longer forecasting. It's not working for you. What's going on there, friend? You, your astrology ain't working for you. It's only uh, works part of the time. You're trying to make it work. You you take sayings and you shift things around to make it work. You change things around to make it work, Orion. Orion's on the fixed cross, but. And so that symbolism is appropriate there. The lion in there is appropriate, but it's not the right. It, they're pointing to the wrong thing. The Great Pyramid is built on the circumference of, it tells you the circumference of the earth. It also tells you the distance from the earth to the moon. Uh, its architecture is built with, encoded with all that information. But it's also the third eye in Fomahawk. Let's go find Fomahawk. Oops. I have to get used to this new keyboard. I'm typing one-handed. <clears throat> there we go. Fomahawk. And it's the ALF, the Alpha. Really? That's not Fomahawk. That's not Fomahawk. I know it's not. That's in the wrong place. Let's just pop into the Arabic. 
You know, it is. Wow. So the Egyptians moved the sheepfold again. I need to see that. I need to see that. Take me back to the Egyptians. They moved the sheepfold again. They do. Wow. I never saw that. Because I know in the western it's the sheepfold starts out over here in the Pleiades as the flock and then it moves here but I did not know that we had another sheepfold here and it's star fox of course uh, actually let's put it in the big one we have now when they give us another Western, we have new ones on this. They're taking away information and they're giving us information. Is that the swan, the herring? What is that? Gruis, Altair, Alnair, Altair. I am hooked onto a satellite. That's what Fox is. Fox is a satellite. So the sheep are now below Fomahawk in the next stage. This would be the sheep. And they've got feathers. They're feathered sheep. We also have the phoenix down here. Microscopium. This is the investigator. You look into the microcosm of the macrocosm. But this is our guy here. This is Aquarius is what has been written about in every age. It's called the golden age for a reason. He walks on the sun. His feet is, he walks on the lion. He has the feet. It's a man with the feet of a lion, right? Aquarius. The sphinx itself. The knowing. The knowing. And that is the pineal gland. Uh, Bill Donahue's got some new videos out. Memory. Our memory is up here in Pegasus. It's part of the hippocampus. We have the Merkaba. We have all of these great uh, stars that we can translate. And there's the Sadal Nazi. There you go. Let's put that one in the Arabic and see what they tell us. I left this one to um, Bill Donahue in the Greek because he's he done such a fine job. So it's the lucky star of the excellent one. How about that? So we have a new translation for Nazi now, which is the excellent one. But this is the white horse that the Messiah comes in on. And he's got uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on. Did I get my thing straightened out yet? I was angry about losing my king stars here. Somebody sent me a thing on how to transfer oh come on there are so many satellites in the sky lucky stars of the tents lucky stars of the tents lucky star of the tent there we go first lucky star of the king and it's on his right shoulder you remember me telling you about your right shoulder what's on your right shoulder we have those two demons, <laughs> one on the right, one on the left, uh, and this is one of the luck of lux and then it goes on over into Capricorn with one of the swallower luck, and then uh, the stars in Capricorn are the lucky stars of the slaughter. Again, these are the Jedi. You Capricorns are, are younglings, your baby Jedis. Mars doing his business. I'm still on the 11th, but I'm going to leave it there. This is a good video to do for the 11th. It will be Veterans Day. Uh, the President of the United States gonna, is going to meet the President of Russia in France, of all places. They call that neutral ground. I think not. There is no neutral ground anymore. Uh, Megiddo, uh, the valley, the, the Bible calls it the Valley of Decision. When you're in Megiddo, you're in confusion, you're in decision. And they're always going to give you the two choices of choosing one side or the other. Uh, we need to, everyone should go through the Arabic in this. 
because it does reveal so many of the names to you. And uh, like Ophiuchus, somebody asked me a question about Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus is Hercules. He's Vishnu, he's Hercules, he's the snake charmer, he's the hero, right? Is This is the hero's journey tale here. We have a lot of eagles in the heavens. This is considered more in the Capricorn line because of the way things run. Uh, the dolphin, which is from the French, the dauphin, one of the sittings, uh, he's uh, the heir to the throne. These are the Dufons. He's got the arrow. Uh, what we're seeing a lot of imagery of right now is the staff. I need to pause this. Kelly is growling at something and she don't do that. That was just weird. My dog does not growl. Uh, she goes into full attack mode. She don't ever just low tone growl. But I have a different dog now. I believe my dog had an out of body experience. I really do. You know, we're not the only souls here. People are not the only souls here that are trapped in this construct. Uh, everything that breathes, that has the breath of life, is trapped in this construct. Y'all need to know that. And they won't out just like we do. And a lot of them are more awake and more aware than we are. But I believe my dog had an out-of-body experience. She's doing really strange things she's never done before. Uh, usually she can't sit still for two seconds. When you interact with her, she becomes real hyper. And now she just comes and sits and stares at me in the eyes. And I mean burn a hole through me who can blink first and I've I've sat there and it's gone on for 20 30 minutes where she's just so intensely looking at me and it, you can see the tears well up in her eyes and I can feel the frequencies off of her she's connecting with me <clears throat> on a soul level I'm sorry I have a <coughs> a scratchy throat I've not been getting enough sleep uh, there's been a lot of frequency in the air. They've ramped up the 5G here because of the election. It's been off the charts, and it does affect me. Uh, I'm, I'm quite in, uh, aware when they kick up the 5G here and what it does to the people. And you can tell when they turned it off. Right after the elections, they turned it off, and Las Vegas has never been so quiet. You could hear a freaking pin drop in this city tonight. Everybody is exhausted. I had to go to the store earlier today for Kelly, and uh, everybody was exhausted. They have just run us into the ground, draining our energy with this 5G. That's another story for another day. Uh, Kelly, my dog, is different. Uh, she's improving. I'm going to tell you what I've done for her diet. Uh, I've been going to Sprouts, and I'm getting the antibiotic-free, uh, crap-free, free-range chicken and eggs. Uh, I'm boiling the chicken with some organic fresh peas. She needs some greens. They need a certain amount of chlorophyll in their body. Uh, and uh, I eliminated the carrots. Uh, they seemed... Uh, they're more used for getting rid of worms and stuff. Carrots are not actually beneficial to the dog, as they claim. So I ditched the carrots. Um, it's a genetically modified anyway. Carrots used to be purple. That's uh, another video, too. Had to do with the French Foreign Legion and why everybody turned orange was because of what they did to the carrots. So, but uh, I've been getting her for snacks. Uh, for now, I've been getting Heartland uh, Free Range Buffalo, uh, and it's no nothing in it. These are just Free Range Buffalo, and I used to feed that to my dogs when I lived in Oklahoma. Uh, buffalo jerky and all of that was everywhere, and my dogs loved it. So I've been giving her that. Uh, what I'm going to do, because that shit's pricey, and she's a little piglet, so I'm going to get me a dehydrator and just make my own uh, and do it that way but the most important thing i i done was i have to get her off the water uh, my dog is a toilet drinker i can put fresh water on the floor and she's gonna go open the toilet and stick her head in it so i started getting she likes cold water 
so I've been purifying water. I've had to put shit on top of the toilet to keep her from going in it. And then uh, a fresh squeeze of lemon or lime in her water. It's the electrolytes. When you talk about the brain and how it operates, it requires water and it requires electrolytes to function properly. Hence, what the breakdown in why you have a seizure is it's a mishap in the brain is where the seizures are coming from. So since I started introducing her to what I call natural electrolytes, um, she is responding and I have not had a seizure since. Uh, purified water with a fresh lemon. Now when I buy, I'm having to buy the lemons and limes and I know that our water here, number one, Las Vegas water is full of Roundup. All kind of people are having problems with the water, even bathing in it. They just constant rashes and stuff. So uh, I moved her to purified water and then introduced, because it's purified, it don't got anything in it. So you need to put something back in it. But I also know the vegetables are all coated with this Roundup shit. So you wash them. And I found the best neutralizer for that is baking soda water. Just fill your sink up with uh, some good water or a pot, a boiling, a pot of boiled water. Then pour your baking soda in it and then wash your fruit, your food in that. You can let it cool down, but if you're going to use tap water, I would boil it. Myself, I've been carrying water. So I use uh, bottled water. I've ordered... Uh, a water a cold water purifier that's really the best way is uh, using water that's been run through coal and then add the baking soda to it I always put baking soda in my bath I don't care for showers they make me dizzy but I love a hot bath and I'll put baking soda in my water to neutralize uh, a lot of that that's in there and you let it sit in a minute before you get in it actually you let it do its work all right, enough about uh, Kelly. She is doing better, but I do have a different, different dog. Uh, I won't say she's healed by any means. She had so many seizures, it did take a toll on her liver. Uh, the last lab came back bad on her liver. So that's when I started introducing chlorophylls back in to the diet. Instead of just, I boil a dozen eggs... Uh, I boil a bunch of uh, chicken breasts without the fat, without the skin or any of that. And uh, I add lemon to that water when I boil it to the uh, chicken. And then I give her boiled eggs with chicken. She's doing well, but I have to say, the smell can be horrendous. <laughs> she farts now, and it's, oh my goodness. But uh, that is good for her as well. It helps move things through the bowel system when you when you can introduce that slight fermentation of the eggs. Where, whew. Anyway, she's doing better. She loves the new food. It's a bit pricey, but to me, it's worth it. And I am learning. Not I'm using what I learned about babies and about uh, dehydration and the electrolytes that are required for the mind. So anybody that can gain anything out of that, uh, plus the wild meats, uh, trying to pull her, I'm leaning more towards if I can get more duck instead, or turkey, uh, as long as they're not these caged turkeys. When we were in Oklahoma on the reservation, you have so much wild meat. Uh, there's, there's always uh, fresh meat everywhere for the animals. And dogs are not grain eaters. You see a dog eat grass because it has your what you're feeding it has no chlorophyll in the diet, and they require it. All animals require it. Uh, I I'm gonna eventually move from the English peas, and I want to get me some a window garden of herbs that are conducive for chlorophyll and dogs, and start introducing that into her diet as raw foliage that I can put in with the whatever meat I'm going to use. And so that's what I'm doing for Kelly. Uh, and it's like taking care of another baby. Uh, I've been keeping two kids. One is an infant, 
and one is just starting school. So I get them on the weekends. The mother, she's young. She's holding down a job and trying to go to school. So I don't mind helping her out any way I can. Her mother keeps them during the week for her so she can sleep in school. And then I keep them on the weekend. And I generally keep them here, except for Sunday. For Sunday, I have to keep them at her house because they go to school the next morning. But um, the baby was colicky when I got it. And uh, I thought I proved to the mother that this free milk you're getting is what's doing this to your child. And uh, I, so I went and got it, uh, goat milk. And the child responded immediately, call it gone, sleeping all night, great baby. Uh, but she don't want to spend the money, and now the baby screamed all weekend. I'm hoping to connect with Grandma and uh, see if we can't pitch in and solve this problem. It's not that much. What is $100 a month for a baby? Uh, that cheap shit, the government's giving you $75 a month if you had to pay for it. I've been through this with several mothers on WIC, WIC products, WIC products. If it's free, there's nothing free about it. Somebody's paying for it somewhere. There is a law of equivalent exchange. So when you, you think you're going to take from one and give to another, uh, it just don't work that way. The best that we can hope to do is for ourselves. We're responsible for ourselves, not the others around us. Uh, when we try to start fixing other people's lives, what we're doing is ignoring the beam in our own eye while we're trying to get a speck out of theirs. This thing is so big that I couldn't hope to understand it in a hundred lifetimes. You'd have to live to be a thousand years old to really get all of these wheels within wheels. Uh, but um, once you see the pattern and the patterns that start building, then it's easy to know what's going to come next, what comes next, what comes next. It's like in Revelation and in the Nag Hammadi, we're told, um, I'm going to tell you, this is what is. And then I'm going to tell you what was. And then I'm going to tell you what is to come. And what is to come is... There are two constructs, and they both appear infinite. The way that uh, phi, the PHI, the phi, the 1.618 is set up, and it builds on its previous self, it truly is infinite. But pi, it is infinite, but it's in a loop. It's going to loop back around on itself if that makes any sense, to where uh, phi starts with one and goes through infinity. Uh, but pi uh, doesn't start with one. It starts with 3.1. And so it's going to loop back around into itself. It's a closed circuit. Phi is an open circuit of nature. And it does repeat itself practically, but it goes on infinitely in an outward motion. The pattern repeats itself on every step rather than uh, pi. It's got to come back around in its own loop. Phi is open-ended. That's the difference between the two. An open-ended or a closed circuit construct. Pi and phi. And they want the closed circuit construct because you can't control an open circuit construct. I love the way we can layer the symbols on top of symbols. Uh, Luciferians. Let's talk about Luciferians. Luciferians are uh, the Hebrew people. I don't want to call them Jews because Jews really just denotes it's just something for one tribe, and what we know is Jew today really ain't Jews. They're Zionists. All right, they have a different agenda. There are agendas within agendas. Uh, so you have this serpent on a pole that you don't see here, right? 
and they call the Jews kikes, or some say kites. And that's the KK, right? Well, the other end of this pole is Aries, and it's the age of Asia. It's really all the peoples of the Orients. I don't even like calling them Jews. They're peoples of the Orient. Uh, we're told Abraham came out of the Orient, Mesopotamia. Uh, let's look at the bigger picture of this this his story what ha, what was we talked we've talked about what is let's talk about what was uh, all of this down here that's called Egypt I've told you that's really Greek that's Greek now the ancient Greek Empire believe it or not goes all the way back to Sagittarius it's ruled by Jupiter. He's Zeus. He's the father of the gods. That's where this story begins. Uh, I'm going to refer you to my big fat Greek wedding. Everything comes from Greek. It's also Oriental. Arabic is flipped Greek. Arabia is an Oriental language. It's Middle Eastern, Middle East Orient. It's where you go to get orientated to get initiated. So this goes all the way back to the age of Sagittarius. It's where it comes from. It's when all that began and the manipulation began. The fall happened in Virgo, also on the mutable cross. The destruction happened in uh, Cancer. They reached their apex here in confusion in Babylon and Northern Africa. And hey, this is the funny thing about Northern Africa. It's the true land of the Sabians. You have these people called the Sabbatean Frankish people, right? Where this Bohemian Frankish thing came from. The Sabbatean is an old word. It's uh, Sabian, and it means uh, they were the first astrologers. They were astrologers. And they were the greatest astrologers of all, are the Sabians. Uh, literally when you watch that fractal move then you'll understand why Nick the NK Saban is the head football coach of Alabama Bama and it has the big red X and they're the crimson tide the red tide with the red X marks the spot they're the freaking elephant in the room it's the heart of Dixie there's so much going on there, y'all. We'll never figure that out in a million years. You've got Mardi Gras in Mobile at the bottom of the state. It's where Mardi Gras was brought to the United States, not New Orleans. After it left France, it came to Mobile, Alabama. Joe Kane, Kane, Giuseppe. Joe is Joseph, Giuseppe. Giuseppe Kane. Now you know he's an Italian, right? Giuseppe came and brought Mardi Gras there. You trace this route back. He's Latin, not Italian. Let me take that back. He's Latin. There's a difference between Latin people and Italian people. Uh, Latin is part of the snake. So this Giuseppe character brings this tradition over here. And it's all the symbolism. It's incredible. But in the northern part of the state, they fly the Fleur de Lis. You have all the tags in Franklin County are 33. They start with 33. Everything is Masonic, four square, built out, Russell Trust, Yale University, everything. You have uh, NASA there in Huntsville. He's the hunter. He's Huntsville. He's the hunter. All states are done this way, and you need to look at your state and the symbolism that goes with it to find out what part your state plays and that how that state's going to vote and what that state's going to do and what it stands for and the states are separated just it's a state of mind you, you live in a state where you are conducive with the state of mind uh, which is ironic of me being in Las Vegas because truly it is it is my state of mind uh, I had to leave the south I was getting really tired of the rednecks and uh, the way they were constantly trying to pin the blacks against the whites. Uh, 
and it's I, I was sick of it. it it repeated so much that I just wanted to puke that the people were still getting in the lines and following the script and oh gosh the Alabama Auburn football games and it was just overkill for me and I'm just I'm not that type of person I'm not I'm not that type of competitive person I'll tell people, you don't want to compete with me, you will lose. I don't even want to play the game. If you win, I let you win, just to get you to play the game. But I moved to the what I thought was the complete opposite of being in the South, in that prejudiced mentality. So I moved to California. And I found it's just another kind of prejudice. Uh, you are constantly judged by your appearance, your accent, what food you eat, if you smoke, what you put into your body, and then they're judging you completely on that. Oh, you eat meat, or you do this, or you do that. And I was like, oh my God, this is another kind of prejudice. It's This is unbelievable. And I know that I call them micromanagers. So I left one set of micromanagers and fell into the lap of another set of micromanagers. So... I didn't choose Las Vegas, but I ended up here, and I like it here. There's no prejudice here. There's every kind of freak you could imagine, and nobody's pointing fingers. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. They don't care if you smoke or you eat meat or you, whether you want to dress up like a woman or live like a homeless person, and they everybody is nice to everybody. It's really different. I really get it. It, that's why they call it Sin City. Everything goes here, right? You don't point a finger at me. I don't point a finger at you. It's more of a live and let live. I don't care what you do as long as you're not trying to hurt me, hustle me, get over on me. Let's just go along to get along and accept everybody for who they are. And that's the way it is here. Uh, the tourists come in from all over the world. I love living in international cities. Houston was my first experience with an international city. And it literally was my favorite place that I've ever lived. And I've lived in Miami, San Diego, Dallas. I've lived in some big cities. Uh, but, uh, but I learned so much being in international cities. And the different cultures that come here from all over the world, I really like it. When you walk down the street, uh, you have to listen to their speech. You don't know by their dress where they're from. Everybody that comes here, they're going to uh, bring their shorts and t-shirts because we're in the desert, right? So everybody dresses alike. Uh, and no, there's no difference. So I like it here. I like the mindset here. Now, you're going to have the prejudice and uh, left versus the right wherever you go. But when you get to the root of it, I'm riding the bus for a, over a year here, I am with the root of the people. I'm at that bottom level. When you, when you don't have a car, you're forced to interact with the people. And um, so I'm not just driving by everybody going to do my thing. I'm, on, I'm at the ground level. I'm at ground zero, riding the bus and walking, meeting the people. When you're sitting at the bus stop, you, you talk to the people. No matter who they are, doesn't matter who comes sits down beside you. You say hello, how you doing, what's going on, and uh, I love it. I, I I absolutely love it. I don't mind sitting at the bus stop at all anymore. It aggravated me at first because it's exhausting having to go across town, the time that it consumes. But uh, I'm okay with. I get to, and that's how I interact with people here. It's really my only interaction. Uh, where I live, people move in and out every week. Your neighbor's different every other week. You don't know who's going to be your neighbor. But when you get on the buses regularly, you, you start bumping into some of the same people, and then you begin building relationships. You're not just the good neighbor saying hello. You begin. They begin to tell you, more down-to-earth, personal things about themselves. And then you start learning more knowledge about the programming that goes on here. And then uh, I also live next to UNLV, which is, uh, they run a huge medical school over there as well. 
and you get to meet students, young people from all over the world, not just tourists coming in to have a good time, gamble, spend some money, uh, do what people do in Sin City. Everything has its good and its bad. There's some rotten shit going on here. Uh, but uh, even in the holiest places is the most rotten shit. The Vatican has the most rotten shit of rituals occurring there. Jerusalem, uh, any place that's considered holy, uh, you can just go ahead and throw UN in front of that. And that's why they gave us the UN. Uh, they want the unworld order. It's un everything. They're ag un against, away from, to apart from, without, un. You're without. We're under, we're under. All right. But that's perspective from Las Vegas and Sin City. Uh, people tend to be less prejudiced here. That's what I got to say about it. Is I'm not, uh, um, it's kind of like being in the middle. You're not on one side or the other. Let's uh, take a look at Nevada. Images. It's beautiful here, if you like the desert. And they have all this red rock. Uh, the symbol on the licenses are incredible. We have this mountain goat. It's really a ram. It's not a goat. But we have these goats. Uh, I thought when I first got it that they had because I'm a Capricorn, I said, damn, are they putting their astrological symbols on the license? But no, it is the state animal. Let's go to Nevada. Uh, what is the tree of Nevada? State tree. I don't have an R in state. State. Do state symbols and remove tree because you have a tree, you have a flower. Oh, we get a lark. How do we get the? Well, I guess we do have waters here. We get a turtle. Oh, that's interesting. The great turtle, but we have this mountain goat that is some type of symbol. It's a ram. The goat ram. Goats are amazing creatures. I've been watching the beach for a while, people. I love the beach. It's my it's my go to place and when I can't get to the beach, I come here to Sunrise Earth and watch it. I can go place any place I want to go. What did I want to look up here? I forget. Let me jog my memory. Oh yeah, the goat video. Yeah, I want the jumping. This one. This is unbelievable. Watch what these goats do. Everybody needs to look up their symbolism on their cross, and you'll learn a lot about yourself. Goats are some brave ass. To do what they do, they're incredibly brave. Watching. Check that shit out. How does a goat get down a mountain? That is freaking incredible. Talking about Mario here. Zelda. 
I thought that was one of the most incredible things I'd ever seen. Uh, goats are amazing what they can do and where they end up, how they just end up on these um, side of a freaking mountain. They're the cloven hooves. So, the book of Enoch tells us about the one-horned goat. We're, we're told in a lot of places about the one-horned goat that comes from the west and covers the face of the earth. Almost got some kangaroo in them, don't they? So then now they're doing uh, goat yoga goat yoga we never had goats growing up we had one neighbor that had a goat and I hated it it was a billy goat and it would always push us down I didn't like him he was a bully he was a bully goat but they can get up some places this is what I guess I need while I'm here I need to do all these tours and go out in the desert in the Grand Canyon I've been in here a year and haven't done any of that Check it out. How many of you would do that with no ropes and gear? A uh, goat seems to have no fear. Interesting animals. Uh, let's check up on Angry Ram, another one of my favorites. channel and get his latest video because he went trick-or-treating we have a trick-or-treater that got attacked it's only a minute long I'll even cut up over here for you so here comes angry ram after the trick-or-treater <laughs> you ain't got a chance around that thing and that's what we're dealing with now we got angry ram in our midst It's on the cardinal cross. It's cardinal fire. Took out that trick-or-treater. They had to cut the balls off of uh, Angry Ram a while back because he assaulted, uh, I think it was a Japanese or Chinese, probably Japanese uh, reporter, came over to do a story on Angry Ram and got assaulted. So they had to... Uh, Take him out. Angry Ram Fight Club. His name is Rambro. And he's something else. They're going to fight over the punching bag here. They always back up. But nature itself teaches us about ourselves. The Native Americans, North and South America, hold the greatest knowledge for the age of Aquarius. We understand of the law of equivalent exchange. When you take something from the earth, you must give something back. And so we have a bunch of takers on this planet. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of them are associated with this ram right here. And I'm not talking to you people who are Aries. I'm talking about the age of Aries, those that came of the age of Aries and their, their, uh, their mindset. They are angry now. They didn't get what their book told them they was going to get because they misread it and their astrologers keep changing the zodiac. They keep changing the story, trying to manipulate it in their favor. They want to rule the world. And he is very territorial. Here comes another ram. Let's see how Rambro takes this. Rambro, they had to cut one of his horns off. We know him. He broke one of his horns. 
so we can always tell which one he is. He's the one-horned ram now. One is named Dodge and the other one's named Ram. I always say you got to dodge the Ram. Trying to pick a fight. You don't want to pick a fight with Ram, bro. And they are. It's, it's the war mentality. It's when wars, you know, this planet's been in perpetual war. And that's what it feeds on. It feeds on division and war. And we've all been fragmented and we're all trying to pull ourselves together. Uh, go fight the camera guy. Everybody needs to check out this channel. It didn't have this many subscribers. It only had probably about 10,000 subscribers when I started watching it a few years ago. But it sure has grown. But the Native Americans will tell you if you want to learn, you watch the animals. And Kelly, like I said, she's been freaking me out lately. She's laying in the bathroom growling like there's something in there. She's hearing something I'm not hearing. And a low growl, and she never, ever does that. Not that, just low. She don't do that. She's all out straight into a really loud, high-pitched, bust-your-eardrum bark. It's attack, everything. She's super hyper. But not anymore. Different dog now. I'm convinced she had an out-of-body experience. There's no doubt in my mind. She keeps um, everything, everything about her personality is different. As it would be somebody who woke up. Who like, wow, what's really going on here? And you know, when that happens, I've seen it happen to a lot of people, uh, to where they have this massive awakening of this spiritual experience, and it lasts for three days to a week, and then it slowly dissipates away. Your body flushes those uh, chemicals that the pineal gland has released out of your body, that milk and honey. It appears that those that are uh, on the other side, they uh, no, I don't know about her. They uh, are after adrenaline, and adrenaline uh, does not heal the body. Adrenaline actually kills the body. It throws muscles into a hyper state. And uh, why on earth would they want adrenochrome? I'm trying to get the adrenaline out of my body. I don't want to engage the lower chakra. I, I just That's inconceivable to me how anybody would want that. It's just, I don't, you're 100% you're feeding the flesh there. That is all about the flesh. It has no spiritual value whatsoever. I guess when we say spiritual, we automatically think of a higher vibration, but there are low vibrational spirits as well. But we are told this construct will come to an end. The snake eats itself. It's the Ouroboros. It, it, pi, it comes back around and it eats itself. To where nature, the phi ratio, it expands from one to infinity. It doesn't loop back within. If it loops back in with itself, it keeps going off and it'll do, um, let me show you how the loop would work. Uh, am I even on this yet? Where am I at? I need my screencast back up. How come I can't get it? All right, let me go here. Let me drop them all down. Well, I'm not understanding where my, where's my screen. Yeah, I know you're recording. Yeah, let me pause. There we go. Make sure I'm here. I lost, I lost my ability to do what I wanted to. This video is getting out of hand, but I'm going to keep going. I don't care about the time. Y'all can just pause it, come back and watch later. Uh, I just feel like talking. I've done a chart 
yesterday that kind of disturbed me. I've done the chart before. It's a repeat chart. But then I saw something I didn't see before. I'm starting to understand now why I've been having problems getting these charts out. And everything has to be in its proper time. And I do believe that I've had that one chart holding me back. And it was because that was the one that I was intent on uploading. I have done it twice. And uh, I believe it was that chart holding me back. So now I, I, I feel more like I'm going to be able to move forward now without all these delays. Had I not gotten a request for that chart, I don't believe I'd have had any delays. But it was that one. That's how important it was. And you already know who you are. You've already got your chart. So you see... You see what I'm saying here. Uh, if that person cares to post their chart and share it, it would be the one I would want to share with everybody. But uh, that would be up to that person. I did request uh, anyway so that everybody could see. But a lot going on in our lives. And it was really about what's going on now. A lot of these charts I'm doing... The, what's happening today are really affecting a lot of you. A lot of you are born with that Pluto in either Leo or Pluto in Virgo. And it's whole generations of people. And the change that's coming and the reasons we came into this construct. And uh, a lot of people say we agreed to come here. Not everybody agreed to come here. No, no, no. If we understand the story of Yaldabaoth, we understand that uh, the word is raped. He raped his mother, and he stole that light. First, she gives him some light, right? She creates him. He becomes this shadow light. Excuse me. But then he rapes her and steals her light to create. And uh, he begins creating. And it, it, it is mutated as she as he was. It's, again, a copy of a copy. And every time you roll off a copy, um, the it gets a little bit weaker with every version. You have to add new carbon or new DNA into the machine to make the print go through. There's only so much carbon there and it runs out. So um, what we are dealing with here... Like I said, what does the other one look like? It looks like this one, uncorrupted. Uh, we're told this mortality will put on immortality. So there's a frequency coming. There's a frequency coming. Of the age of Aquarius and especially Capricorn. Because it's the feminine force. It's cardinal, not fixed. When we move into Aquarius, it's a fixed sign. Uh, it will be much like the age of Taurus, but instead of uh, the fixed earth, Taurus, this is the fixed heavens. And it the, will no longer be on the crooked cross. Uh, we were talking about the crooked cross. What it is, let me do the thing. I want to get this right there was a crooked man he walked a crooked mile he found a crooked sixpence against a crooked style he brought a, he bought a crooked cat there are many different versions to this song but it basically is about a crooked cross there was a crooked man he walked a crooked mile he found a crooked sixpence on a crooked style he bought a crooked cat, which caught a crooked mouse. They all lived together in a little, little crooked house. There's another version of this that goes something like, uh, uh, not there was, but I saw a crooked man. Uh, he walked a crooked smile. He walked a crooked mile. He had a crooked cross or a staff in one uh, and a crooked smile. The other version that we're not told of about these rhymes. These are all uh, spells, rituals that they get our children to do to perpetuate this constant 
confusion, illusion, delusion in this age of Pisces. It's the Mayan age, it's this age. If you want to say Mayan is illusion, then it is the age of Pisces, not the age of Aquarius. Aquarius is about knowing. It's far from illusion as you can get to be right next to it. They are opposites. It's also opposite of confusion of the age of Leo. And there's much confusion now. We're experiencing that confusion as long as they keep evoking the inverted or the crooked cross. Now, why is the Piscean cross crooked? Because opposite Pisces is Virgo, which is the black Madonna that we have, but they invoke Lucifer. So it's like another leg added. The, the cross is hooked over at the bottom. It's a crooked cross. They don't want to stay in their seat. They want the cardinal. They want to rule as cardinals. But we're in a mutable age. The Zionists completely don't understand about what they want to hijack age after age after age. They go all the way back to the crook, to the fixed cross in Leo before the flood. It goes all the way back to the actually the actual problem started on the cardinal cross in Leo. I mean in Libra when Libra went past the or fell into the wilderness after it crosses the fall equinox the fall equinox is now here with uh, Leo getting ready to take over the position of the fall equinox when the man rises in the east the lion sets in the west uh, what, how you do this is you watch the setting sun. As the sun sets, uh, the lion will rise, but he rises in the night. It's the, I guess you would call it the black lion, right? He's yellow, the, ruled by the sun, gold, but he will be in darkness. He is in the darkness. Everything is flipped and opposite. And then they do it again. They flip and invert the symbols to evoke uh, the opposite effect than what we would naturally have. It is therefore unnatural, like the tropical cross is unnatural. And their, their biggest apologetics for it is the earth is off balance by 23.5 degrees, so their tropical cross is off balance by 23.5 degrees to compensate for that. There is no compensation for that. Light doesn't bend at 23.5 degrees. Light actually refracts at 42 degrees. If you want to talk about refraction, when you shine a light at one angle down it, even into your eye, when the light comes into your eye. We've done the video on light refraction into the eye, and it's 42 degrees. So a lot of confusion going on. We can understand some of it uh, by using the symbolisms. Uh, it, the confusion comes with the alphabets the sp and the spells. Because the symbols, even though they can slightly change from culture to culture, will always remain the same. They'll always be the same. We, we can look around the world, and when you see the zodiac symbols, do that. We can go into the old cave art and the petroglyphs and uh, you can see the different symbols all over the world. You can see the arrow, the water sign, the Pisces sign. They're all there. We find them everywhere. big change going on right now with the moon. I don't usually talk about the nodes of the moon. I leave that to the sidereal astrologers. It doesn't 
exactly work in with the alchemy but it does appear to be very prevalent I just haven't found the exact alchemical connection other than uh, the the duality law here uh, to where you have polar opposites and uh, so the north node of the moon has and the south node have been in Sagittarius and Gemini and they're going to be moving into um, is it Cancer and Capricorn? Am I right about that? So we've got the nodes of the moon changing as well. A lot of them look at it as your past life or your future life. Or again, much like the two pillars, grace, uh, our mercy, and severity. The same thing. Uh, again, just duality. Duality came into... These are another symbols of the zodiac that you will find everywhere. And they alter them slightly, but you can still put them together and see. The alchemical symbols are the most important ones. And when you realize that uh, the symbol for Saturn is also the same on the alchemical symbol, uh, what do we call it? elemental table periodic table of elements and we find the symbol for lead here would be the same as the symbol for Saturn as well but you can go through them all we have our noble gases our we it, within it you have the cardinal the mutable and the fixed you have the solids, the liquids, and the gases. And they're the same as the alchemical table. I don't have that anymore. They're the same as this and they go together. So when you're looking at say images, uh, images within images, we see an image of Saturn here, so we know, right? Uh, you'll find the, uh, the all the other images will be embedded in a picture. It's like the highlights magazines we used to get as kids and they would tell you, can you find the hidden things in these pictures? Well that's what they do with the art today. It's all artificial. It's artificial intelligence. It's artificial symbols. It's not produced by nature. These are the winter cocktails. Beer. Here's a good one because it's got a lot of them. And the Egyptian symbols of the hieroglyphics work with these as well, because it's all about it's all about what they call sigil magic. I used to have the best book on sigil magic. That our alphabets actually came from what we call a rune or a sigil, and that every line, whether it's straight or curved, has a frequency, and when you add them together, it adds up to all of this. And this is, this is the table laid out. We can go into some of the old handwritten manuscripts. The older, the better. It's been less tampered with. And you, just, you have to memorize them. And you teach yourself. That way, when you get to... Um, when you start looking at things, whether they're advertisements or whatever, you see the symbol being invoked, like the Nike symbol. The Nike symbol, it has the swoosh on it. It, it, it is invoking Mercury. A lot of people want to say, that's the ring of Saturn. No, Nike is actually a name of Mercury. 
it is Mercury. It's the wings on the feet. Your little swoosh is a representation of uh, winged feet, Mercury. And that has to do with commerce and travel, trade, all these symbolism. I've always said the most wicked thing on this planet is the advertisers. It's not the companies in their products, and it's not the people that's buying them. It's the advertisers, because they add a verse. We're in a universe, which is let there be, and they add a verse, and then tell you, thou shalt not. Don't do this, do that. Love this table. But you have to do your homework. You have to want to look. You have to want to know. You have to dig, 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 dig. And always find more than one witness. Uh, find an alchemical witness. Find a zodiacal witness. Find a historical witness or a scriptural witness. Uh, and these things start connect together and then you get these aha or voila moments and the light goes off in your head. Your ta-da, the last sorcerers. Sorcerers uh, are unlike magicians. Sorcerers are more like alchemists. The magician evokes in a spiritual realm uh, through incantations to where a sorcerer are going to use alchemy. They're going to use the material world to transform. We would call them chemists, hence alchemy. Alchemy is from chemistry. And they're doing everything backwards to destroy this place. Why? Why? Uh, we can go to the horse's mouth themselves and tell you why. The rulers of this world want God to come back. Apparently God is missing, and they want him to come back to this world and pat them on the back and put them in charge. That's what they want. But they don't realize if their God is gone, he ain't coming back. Nature's going to take back over this planet. Their little ruse is almost up. That's why they're building the AI artificial intelligence uh, it's another copy of their God. It's a copy of a copy. It's another copy of their God. And he is only one part. They're only choosing one part. And they want to exalt it to the highest level at any means. Their, uh, their motto is the end justifies the means. Uh, another uh, question I got was about the elites and Islam. Why the elites are pushing Islam? Uh, they want Sharia law, but not for what you think. Uh, in Sharia law, in the law of Islam, Muhammad married a six-year-old girl. And you can have many wives, and the woman has no voice. She has no say, no rights. She's property, and uh, you can have... Muhammad, like Solomon, had many, many wives. And uh, the age has not mattered. He married this one girl when she was six, and he consummated the marriage when she was nine. So pedophilia is legal. You can even kill your wife. So they can sacrifice them. No problem. Allah don't mind. Allah said do it. You know, they make this claim about uh, you... Do 72, year, 72 virgins, right? You sacrifice yourself for Allah, you get 72 virgins in heaven. And then in another verse, we're told there are no women in heaven. Uh, when you look at it astrologically, all the heaven signs or air signs, they're all masculine. There are no women in heaven. So I asked one once, so are your 72 virgins boys? And they didn't know what to think about that. I know for a fact that a lot of this, what we have today, uh, manifesting itself in the world, comes from, it all comes from the Orient. All of it. All your religions. And it comes from the stargazers that came out of the Orient. You call them Magi, Sabaeans, Sabians, Sabbateans. Uh, the watchers are astrologers. They're watching the stars. They're reading the script. And hence they tried to change the script, and they did. 
it, we have a copy script now. More copycats. They take and they twist it. And they make themselves. It's the uh, same verse. Those that call themselves Jews but are not. And they are of the synagogue of Satan. It goes back to Egypt. And when they got cast out. Let's look at this word. It's called hexos. They spell it a different way. Uh, but it's hexos. It's the hex or the six. And it's the synagogue of Satan. And they wanted so bad to uh, stamp that on Saturn. Uh, but it six the number six never belonged to Saturn. The number six belongs to Jupiter. And it's the number of carbon. It's Carbon has six, six, six. It has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. All right, let's put the electrons and then the neutrons, and you have the pen. The pen is mightier than the sword. So you have the hexos, and uh, they were the ones that were cast out of Egypt. They did it. Asked to, one story tells you. Uh, Moses tell you Pharaoh set them free, and another one tells you that uh, they were thrown out. They were thrown out because they were money changers. This is what they do. And they're also script changers. When, the, when Israel was invaded and taken off, carried captive into Babylon, only uh, three tribes were carried off. You had Judah and Benjamin, and then a few of the Levites that remained with Judah and Benjamin. And that's the second exile. The first exile was the ten tribes going over the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, that's why they call them Caucasians, because they were Asians that went over the Caucasus Mountains. So they're not Europeans. You, Caucasians are not Europeans. Did you hear what I said? To get into Europe, you had to cross the Caucasus Mountains, or the White Mountains. So they're Caucasians. They're mixed. They're hybrids. They're what you call Arab. Arab means mixed. So they're Arabs too. So they're Caucasians, are not Europeans. I'm going to get a bunch over that one too. you got to follow the serpent. you got to follow the snake. And where it's been where it's at, where it's been, and where it's going. Where it's at currently is Europe. It's in Rome. Where it's been was Jerusalem. Before that, it was in Cairo. And now, it, it, before that, it was in China, uh, in India. India, India carried uh, Buddha. Buddha comes out of India and migrates into China, or the, another part of the Orient. So, uh, where does he go next? Uh, the map says he goes to South America. The Zodiac says he goes to South America. And the Vatican has moved its library to where? South America. Yeah, all of the royal families of Europe and the uh, bushes and the uh, rich thieves here are buying up land all over South America. And they're tanking the governments down there. They're tanking all the governments down there. We don't hear about this on our news. This is what you're not hearing. You're not hearing about what's going on in Venezuela. You're not hearing about the people that's been marching in the streets all over Argentina and Chile and Peru. and Everything's in an uproar there. Everything. Every country is in chaos from, from North and South America. The whole world is. But it's... They, they're keeping our eyes on the Middle East, on Europe, and on America. They've got everybody watching these three players. Russia, the Middle East, China, Europe. But what are they not telling you what's going on in South America? That's what they're not telling you. And that's what you always should be looking for. Not what they're showing you, but what they're not showing you. How did we come up with this fan Fan come, uh, we get the word fanatic from fan. It's also another word associated with Jupiter. How do we get uh, a fan out of Hexos? Is that the name of a fan company? 
Now they do it this way. Let's do it their way. Hyksos. Did I do it right? Ancient Egypt, Hyksos. H-Y-K-S-O-S. They say Hexos. See it? There we go. Here's our Hexos. And they were called, they called before the Hebrews, it, they were called Hexos. And they put the hex on you, right? The hex is a six-sided symbol. It's carbon. It's the flesh. The flesh is ruled by Jupiter. Always has been. Always will be. Maybe if Jupiter becomes a star is when mortality puts on immortality. But to me, that's the lie. Uh, even the movie Space Odyssey 2001, they show us Jupiter becoming a star. But in the book, it was Saturn. Hollywood changed it to Jupiter. It was Saturn. How about that one? They change everything. But to me, it's going to be the Earth. The Earth is the third eye, if we can figure out a way. Uh, apparently, the Earth herself is going to figure out a way, and especially if they keep tampering with nature. Uh, they built their false construct right on top of the natural one. And if the natural construct fails, theirs will follow, fall with it. Here's Joseph's journey, or Giuseppe, Giuseppe. He's a Jew, Sep, seven, Giuseppe, words within words, the ancient Hyksos, and uh, the thing about all of this, they don't look like any of the people that are claiming to be Hyksos or Jews today. And if you notice in a lot of the pictograph, uh, he's not really brown, he's, he's red. People are going to be shocked at real history when it finally is revealed who is who. A lot of these images here we see, you got one group claiming um, uh, these are black people or these are white people. You're going to, this is all built by the damn Greeks to start with. And you're going to find a lot of these people, the war, the war, the first war, the great war was between the yellow people and the black people. And so you're going to find that most of them are either yellow, you, they're slant-eyed. It's just so subtle, and they use the makeup to cover it. You don't see what they've done. But nobody wants to admit about that there can very well be um, an Asian person. Hence, Asia, yellow, the yellow man, Asia. Here's our hieroglyphics. Now you tell me, is that right there not talking about Aquarius? Where else do you see that symbol? Aquarius symbol, Aquarius symbol, Aquarius symbol. They're going to tell you that's water. Aquarius is about air and frequency and spirit, not water. Water's not uh, just uh, depicted that way. Let's get the symbols for water. This is not water. I want the ancient. There we go. Here's water. Now, water has no line. Water has no line. Uh, we want Earth and air. These are the two that's ruled by Saturn, Earth and air. Uh, these two are ruled, water and fire are ruled by Jupiter, predominantly. And you would think that would be opposite, but it's not. So we have the Aleph. And this is the one they want to, uh, we're told about this coming prince of the power of the air prince of the power of the air and that it's evil son of Satan a prince is a dolphin heir to the throne but the prince is not the king 
Aquarius is the king. The prince is Gemini or uh, Libra. One or the other. We're again, we're back to the Venus Mercury. And they both have good traits and bad traits. But we're back to that same dichotomy. We don't know which one. But these, uh, to me, it would be more Gemini because Libra is cardinal. Uh, so you, to be a prince, you have to be in a lower position, right? You're not king yet. Where, to where Aquarius is not about a prince. It's about a king and a kingdom. And the kingdom, instead of being in a kingdom, we've been in a kingdom. This is where we've been. We're kingdom. We don't know shit. Because we don't understand. The queen protects the king. The queen's violent. She can go anywhere and do anything. She can move as many spaces as she wants in any direction she wants. And she can take down anybody. But she can also be taken down. And a pawn can become a queen. Alright, this video is two hours long. I'm ready to shut this down. I'm going to go take Kelly for a walk before the sun comes up. And then I'm going to jump into another chart. Uh, still, please hold off. I want to get caught up. I want all these charts done and out, hopefully by Thanksgiving. And then I'm going to take me a little break. And then we'll see about maybe doing some Christmas charts for everybody. I might even give away some free Christmas charts this year. And let that be my gift to those who can't. Uh, I still am doing the free charts. No, I'm not ever going to put any more on that list. They are not hour long. I'm only doing the 15 minute give you your cross charts. I had over 300 last year. I only had 200 subs, but I had 300 requests. And I'm down to 67. 67 out of 300 so um, hopefully I can have those done within I, I, hopefully I wanted them done by the end of the year but that's not going to happen I've gotten too far behind with the others uh, kingdom yeah yeah we're kingdom all right all of their symbols uh, are astrological symbols uh, the advertiser that's what he does he takes the symbol. You're, you're attracted to these symbols subconsciously because they're part of, they're part of us. We're, we are the, the symbols. They're, they're within us. And, uh, if we're Capricorn, we're going to be attracted to those symbols. If you're Aquarius, you're going to be attracted to those symbols. And they know. So, sun symbol is McDonald's. The golden arches. The sun rising, the sun setting, the two kingdoms. All right, I'm going to leave that at that. I can't tell you how encoded SpongeBob is. We'll have to do SpongeBob one day. Everybody's there. Everybody's in SpongeBob, and they're telling you everything. I watched it with my kid. I was really blown away. Another one that's, all of them are encoded. There's not any that's not. There's not any that's not. But it's all part of the programming because they know that the symbol is far more powerful than the word they're telling you. Uh, the, everything is created by symbols. Everything. Even languages are symbols. And then we have the... Bah, 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 what do they call them? Here's another symbol. No, 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 no. Here's the big symbol. Here's the, there's your Sabian symbol. Was I lying? But these are your big symbols. And look at what the symbol is. You want to talk about an earth being a dome? Let's show you what the... I don't know, even know how... Okay, the dreidel. Here we go. Dreidel. There we go, dreidel. Let's find one of the old dreidels. 
they're like this. Some of them, some of the ancient ones, I want the ancient dreidels because they look more like this. This is this is supposed to house everything. Everything you, it was like casting lots. It's almost like a die. You spun it, and whatever one it landed on, whatever side it landed on, was the answer. It's almost like a little freaking e chain. Here, uh, the original ones kind of look like this because it had a dome over the top, and they called it the dreidel. I love that one on the acorn, though. Interesting. A lot like this. Ancient dreidels. How many of you even know what a dreidel is? Here you go. And this is why the earth is tilted. The earth is the dreidel. And that's why you have earth, water, fire, and air. It's the Yod Hey Bob Chet, not Yod Hey Bob Hey. Noon Shin. And there are three dreidels because there are three crosses. So, how about that one for fortune telling? Interesting. I didn't know there were so many different kinds of dreidels. I know an old lady who swaddled a dreidel. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to read that one. I feel like I've swallowed a dreidel sometimes. So here's what's on the dreidel. Noon. Do nothing. Shin. Add a piece to the pot. Hey. Fake half the pot. Take half the pot. And gimel is take the whole pot. Interesting. Didn't know there was this much tradition behind the dreidel. I was more into the symbolism of what it looked like. And that the stories told, they give these to the Jewish children, to the Zionist children. Let me put it that way. Those who came out of Babylon. And they put it, here it is, here it is. That's what you would call uh, an original dreidel. Museum of yo, and it does, it looks like a damn yo-yo, don't it? But this is what the shape of the dreidel. I guess we can look at it as a pendulum. Uh, the difference between the nine candle menorah and the seven candle menorah uh, are the difference between the two sects. Uh, the Egyptians, uh, these were the Hyksos because they had uh, the Enneads, which was nines, the two nines. But, you know, the Egyptians that run the Hyksos out were Greeks. They weren't Egyptians. Uh, we don't have anything from Egypt before Alexander the Great. It's all been compromised by the Ptolemy Empire. Or dynasty, whatever you want to call it. It was all changed. All of it. And that's when we got um, how we ended up with the constellation of Orion story embedded over the top of Aquarius and Leo architecture. The architecture is older than the glyphs. The hieroglyphs are post-flood. Nothing, nothing from pre-flood is there except for the pyramids and the Sphinx. And they've changed that as well. And uh, the AI or y'all to both or whatever's running this place is doing his damnedest to seal the deal on Orion. But it ain't going to happen. Because the frequencies are changing. Uh, nature herself is changing. As we move into the age of Aquarius, the sun is going to change. That's why it's important for them to control the sun. Uh, because it is the the indoor. It's the indoor. 
and it's the one that translates the frequencies from the constellations. And so they give us a fake sun. It doesn't matter. The real sun that we don't see, the one we cannot see with our eyes, is ever present. It is brighter than the sun we are shown. Uh, big revealing day is going to be after the next eclipse when I believe mm, it's going to be a lot worse than what we're seeing now. We're only, as of 2020, we only hit the halfway mark between these two eclipses. Uh, some people, and they're seven years apart, some people would call that uh, tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. And then we have the Giuseppe story where you have seven years of plenty and then there will be seven years of famine that follow. And these are the patterns, the patterns, watch the patterns. Because if we know the patterns, then they can't control us. And we have to see the patterns in the pi and the phi. You have to see the natural pattern that's occurring and then the unnatural one. Uh, like about two years ago, I kept getting what I call messages or uh, I don't necessarily call it channeling, but it was presenting itself as Sarah. Sarah. Sarah's here. I'm here. And it was all about Sarah. And now we have Suri. And I believe that's what I was getting. I was getting uh, the new AI. And there are several of them. Here's what we're going to see is the battle of the AIs. Because everybody's building their own. They want their own. Uh, who's who's got the big AI on the block would be CERN and then there are several here in the United States we're not told about whether they're networked with CERN I don't know I'm not privy to any of that information but I am aware of a lot of the D-Wave computers speaking of the D-Waves let's do this again I did that wrong Cut my nails. D wave quantum, quantum computer. Okay, now I want you to look at the black box. And then we're going to have another symbol. And we get another black box. Let's go for a third. Uh, I don't even know what they call it. Um, they put it on their forehead. Yeah, here we go. Here's the other black box. I like this one the best. Black box. It's like the dreidel, right? It's got the four sides with the four symbols. It's like the dreidel. Uh, the, to me, this is AI, artificial intelligence. And if anything, that's what Mecca does. It's like a processor. Have you ever seen the big processor? Well, that's what D-Wave is. It's a big freaking quantum processor. So we have the same. They call it the Teflon. Am I saying that right? So you have this cube, this pro, I call it the processor. Well, and look where they're putting it, right at the third eye position. Now, isn't that crazy? British Museum Mecca. The Kaaba, it's the Ba Ka. Uh, you have to invert everything. I, I hate that they're doing that. Because six does not, whoever decided six belonged to Saturn, we're missing the fifth planet. Six belongs to Jupiter. Saturn is seven. He's the Saboth. He's the seventh. We're constantly told Saturn is seven. Why are they putting six, six, six on Saturn? Six, Jupiter comes before Saturn. Jupiter is the sixth planet. 
It is the construct of the flesh. We're, uh, it's the black cube. It's the flesh. And they want to control it. And it's ruled through the moon in Jupiter, not Saturn. We're fixing to have a Saturn-Jupiter, I meant Saturn-Moon host on the 11th there in Sagittarius. It's the, it, it's not. And people just buy right into that shit. We're told over and over and over again that seven is Saturn. And yet, they're going to give him 666. Tell him that's the sixth planet. And it's not. I don't know why people just do what they're told. They listen to every, they don't investigate anything. They don't ask any questions. When they ask questions, they're asking the wrong questions. I know I asked enough wrong questions in my life. Well, my baby's come in here and she's decided she wants to play the staring game. And I know she probably wants to go for a walk. So I'm stopping this video here. Throw it into processing. You'll get it in a couple of hours. Have a great day. Go out and create your own universe. Create your own world. Create that act of kindness. Create opportunity for yourself and for others until we all figure out how to get the hell out of here or pull a mutiny and overthrow the whole thing.